Hello, dear listeners. Today we have with us uh, Reul Wolfert. Uh, so let me start with the very first question. Uh, what would you say, Reul, was your biggest success as a, as a business owner, as a founder, entrepreneur, whatever? Yeah, well, I, I, I think my biggest success is still yet to come. <laughs> <laughs> but at least that's what I hope, right? Otherwise, I'm 51 and it's done. <laughs> um, but um, I, I, I think, you know, with hindsight, I've achieved some um, interesting results. Yeah. Um, so um, for some listeners here, so I, I was working for Visa when we launched contactless cards and payments. And that was my responsibility to uh, look for a very large extent, of course, with a, with a big team of people. And um, if you look at success, I think a contactless payments has really shifted the, the payments industry again eh, from chip and dip to uh, using pin codes to just tap and go. Um, and, and it was a very complicated environment. So I see that as a big success. But before I could achieve this success, I did in the Netherlands was part of the core team. The, uh, I would argue that that's been a big success uh, because it's the biggest, uh, most used payment uh, mechanism in the Netherlands for buying online. Uh, okay. in a stop. It is cheap, it's efficient, it's great for the merchants, great for the consumer, user-friendly, guaranteed everything. So I think that that worked out really well. Um, successes that I would see as successes, but maybe not so recognized by the market. So in, in 2017, I delivered a first real-world asset on the blockchain. Um, uh, that was a shareholding of a company. So the shares were tokenized to the blockchain. Nobody gave a shit in 2017. But nowadays, real-world asset tokenization is starting to become a 300 trillion business by 2030. Mm. So actually, having done one of the, the pivotal technologies and regulatory aspects in 2017 already, um, uh, I did, to me personally, it felt like a very big achievement that made zero financial impact on me. It actually costed money more than anything <laughs> else. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that, that comes to the question, Thomas, how do you measure success, right? When, yeah. when is a success success? And, and why is, you know, for one person, the same achievement is a failure for the other person, it's a success. Um, you know, on a, on a personal level, I wrote a book last year, Region 4.0. Well, that I felt like a success. Yeah, I, I've sold uh, over two and a half thousand copies. Mm -hmm. It's just in, in Dutch available right now. Then the publisher came and said, we want to publish it in English globally. Wow, that's interesting. Um, but it, it was, the book started from the fact that I was in a situation with my current business partner at that time that we had a completely disagreement on how to run and the business and do this and he wanted money and I wanted to build a business and we were fighting with lawyers and everywhere and you know I was sort of locked in a situation that I couldn't really move forward I had to resolve this first and out of frustration I decided to write a book <laughs> so you know, there's a perfect example from uh, failure into judging people, running a business, moving along, uh, making mistakes by giving people authorities and recognition, trusting people and not looking after you, your my own interest uh, resulted in a massive financial loss. Uh, okay. And uh, it created something new. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so, I, I, and I think the story of any failure or success right is it interesting that you that you jump directly into failures because that's the second part of the of the interview uh you mentioned two failures one is about recognizing people or finding the right people i guess that's always a, a human thing because judging humans is very complex and the second one is not taking yep. care about yourself so would you say those are the two biggest failures Yeah, and, and uh, I, I would add a third one. Uh, so always look very carefully at the motive why you're doing something, mm. at the purpose of doing something. And, and with hindsight, I realized that uh, when doing this last venture that, that dramatically failed, yeah, um, 
I realized with hindsight that, you know, my business partner, I, I saw him as a very well-established executive entrepreneur millionaire. Mm. And I wanted to be achieve that as well, right? And especially the financial aspects, because although I'm you know, doing really well, so you know, but I'm I wanted to get to that sort of 10, 20, 30 million stage in my life, yeah, money-wise. Um that blinded me from the things I needed to see. And the, what I needed to see was that my business partner was not the man I thought he was. Okay. And I'm not sure he pretended to be different, huh? but I just didn't see yeah, yeah. who he was. Yeah. And that led to a, yeah, all sorts of, you know, small, you know, continuous irritations, mistakes, et cetera, et cetera, that turned and then exploded. Yeah, and, and the reason it could explode is because I didn't put it to a halt when it started. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 that's also a big lesson here. Uh, you know, as soon as you're unhappy with something, just address it and address it properly and clearly and close it. Yeah. 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 Uh, but ultimately, uh, with hindsight, yeah, uh, if I'd known better, should have taken that venture. I don't know, but it also, the fact that I failed miserably, I learned a lot, met new people, moved on my career in a slightly different direction. And that is really adding value to me today. So yeah, you know, you tell me, <laughs> Thomas, was that a failure? Yeah, I lost a lot of money. No, of course not. And that comes to the, to, to, to the next part is, is what have you learned out of those failures? That's one thing. Are there other lessons that you've learned that, of course, I mean, when you learn something, you grow. I mean, that's the, that, yeah. I think, I hope. Yeah. That's, that's what yeah. learning <laughs> is about. And, 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 and that's interesting yeah? because I, I strongly believe, and that's going back to your previous question, like, you know, take care of yourself, right? I was very fit at that point in time physically. Yeah? I went to, I, I'm a boxer, so I went to the boxing two, three times a week. I went to fitness one or two times in addition. So basically, I was in the gym four or five times a week. Mm. Intense training. Uh, you know, I, I was 15 kilos lighter than I am today. Uh, but what I realized later on is that I was uh, psychologically, mentally, um, my empathy and, and, and sensors were not send, uh, enough activated. I don't know how okay. to say it. So... I was physically sort of top shape, yeah? But mentally and my empathy levels on how to feel and experience different people, pick up signals, et cetera, were sort of underdeveloped compared to my physical development. And what I've been doing then is also in that period, I have done a lot of self-exploration. And, and, and that self-exploration, I didn't do with just thinking about who I am with my brain. But that that goes into all sorts of methodologies and ways of yeah, self exploration. So using psychedelics, for example, and mushrooms, um, mm -hmm. but also uh, and, and varieties of that, right? Just to explore who you are. Um, and meditation, uh, breath work. Uh, went to Wim Hof ice baths, breathing exercises, right? And that that's way more about your mental resilience. Yeah, and, and ability to see and feel and experience the world than just your physical state. Mm -hmm. So that to say that you asked that question, right? And it, it really rebalanced my physical and mental side of the equation. Now, you know, I gained 15 kilos, I, I have to lose 10. <laughs> yeah, that's a different challenge. But that's, you know, that's always in life, you know, you have these things. But in, in principle, I'm perfectly healthy. I just want to be physically more equipped you know, to be ready yeah. for a, a longer lasting healthy body as well uh, so i did a lot of mental work and that that yeah that really paid off yeah yeah it's very interesting because um i, I well i agree I, do, I can't agree with status but but it, it's true that very often when when you run a company or yeah when you do things like that you either work hard on your brain and you forget your body like many do 
or people think a lot about their body and then their brain is not going. And I think the in, in Latin, they say men sana in corpore sano, that you should have a, 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 yeah. a healthy soul into a healthy body. It's something that yeah, people should and, really and, take uh, care about. Yeah, absolutely. And and there's this third aspect. There. So you have your brain and your body, but there's your soul. Mm. Yeah. So your energetic being, or whatever people want to call it. Yeah. But that 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 needs some real attention as well. Mm. And brain is very well developed. I'm highly intelligent. You know, so I know all the shit. Yeah. Uh, my body was in great shape, but my mental model, the the association with my soul and and you know, using your six senses, uh, empathy levels, things like that, manifestation power, um, understanding those sort of things that are not taught to people in school or in yeah. work necessarily yeah. because you sort of don't discuss it because you're an alternative freak. I learned that these things actually add tremendous value to your life. Yeah. And maybe for the one, it should be a psychedelic uh, thing, and the other one, it's breath work. And for the other one, it's regression therapy and whatever. Yeah. Mm. People that explore it. I found it's proved tremendously valuable and it helped me get out of my shit. Sort of profound future that's there already. Okay. So leave this shit behind me. I'm not only time wise, like it happened last year, but also out of my head. There is no more thinking about my old business partner with, you know, pain or grief or yeah. you know being angry or anything. It's just it's he it's there. It was a lesson in life. Yeah, it it's it was one it's, step here. It's not done. pick up the phone, right? But if I would meet him somewhere, you know, and I, I wouldn't get upset if I saw him or something. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, it's over. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it's interesting because those things are very often very difficult. And they drive so much loss of of energy and activity in the brain that's uh, yeah. such a waste. Yeah. Uh, and yes, I mean, based on what you say, I mean, it takes also the capability to make a decision. And I mean, I can talk about decision making, you know. So, <laughs> but to make the decision for oneself to take care of yourself, and it's always you know people say, oh, it's bad to be selfish, but fuck, it starts with yourself. You cannot help other yeah. people if if you are not what, what doing is great in an airline. If, you, if you're flying, if you're flying an airplane that says, well, in case of emergency, you know, the thing comes down, you know, first put it on yourself and then for yeah. your kids. Yeah. 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 Now, that sounds maybe weird, but if you're not breathing, how the fuck are yeah. they going to breathe? But you know, right? I, I, I once got certified as a first aid uh, worker for, for a business I had, and because I, I needed to, uh, and the, the, the guy told us, you never put yourself into any danger. Even though you want to save someone, your safety comes always first. Even if the person is dying, you should not die for that person. So, yeah, because then you cannot help other yeah, people. Yeah, well, depends on who that is. I would die for my kids, though. Yeah. That, no, that's that's another thing. Make sure yeah. that, they, that I give them light, right? Yeah, yeah. no, that's that's another story. It was, it was more generic. But yes, for yeah. your kids, for, for, for your loved ones, of course, you would do it, yeah. Yeah, so, that, yeah. but that's also a male capacity, yeah? And I'm not saying women wouldn't do it because they would do it for different reasons. They would do it too, yeah. Yeah, they, they would, would do fight it too. like hell. Yeah, exactly. But we go to war in armies. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that's a good thing, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, that that is historically grown because men are used to doing that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. go fight a mammoth and uh, bring yeah. it down the meat, right? Yeah, well, I, I, for that. I didn't only that that was a risky business, yeah. Uh? Finding a mammoth with uh, eight guys with some wooden spears <laughs> with some stone points on it and then kill a mammoth, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they did it. They survived. We are here to prove it. Somehow so, they managed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Well, I always say it's very, that's very funny because if you think about it, human beings had theoretically zero chance of survival. We are not the fastest. We are not the strongest. We have small teeth. We have a little thick skin. We yeah. get cold, we get sunburned, we, uh, and still we survived and we somehow managed to dominate the yeah. world. Yeah. It's, it's very funny. But that's it was our brain. It's our brain who, yeah. who did that. And that's an interesting story, yeah, because when I was reading, so I, I read this book from uh, Terence McKenna, 
and he's quite famous in the, the world of psychedelics, a revolutionary, and he wrote his book, and, and he has a theory in there, it's called the, the stoned ape theory. Mm. Right? Um, and quite interestingly, so what it basically says, apes developed into uh, 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 mankind because of the use of psychedelic mushrooms. And um, that was a theory when he wrote the book, right? It's okay. Basically uh, uh, the monkeys didn't have enough to eat, so they went into the, the grasslands. There, they found mushrooms, and these were psychedelics. Started eating them. They had a joyful experience. Then they kept eating them, and it moved forward. Now, what we've proven in the last couple of years is that actually the use of psychedelic mushrooms um, uh, after the age of 25, yeah, grows the number of brain cells and increases the total activity levels in your brain cells. Right now, it was hey. always said that after the age of 25 you cannot grow more brain cells so now you can and and this type of research is now sort of i'm not going to say substantiate but at least gives some form of evidence that potentially terence mckenna was not a crazy lunatic some people want you to believe he was he was uh -huh. actually sensible now, of course, that, that doesn't mean that in the next century, you know, our IQs will be four or five hundred. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and by the way, IQ is not the right way to measure it either. Yeah, because our brains can do way different things on the emotional side. Of, yeah. Or there's so many things we haven't discussed, discovered we can do through the use of our neural system. Thing, by the way. But anyway, that, that's an evolution, eh? like, like Wim Hof has proven, with the Iceman has proven, that you can control your nervous system. It was always said by science, you cannot control your nervous system. Mm -hmm. and with uh, help of universities and academia and hospitals and a lot of people sampling, he has proven you can influence your nervous system, whether you feel pain or not. Yeah, You can turn pain into a positive thing if you want to. Yeah. yeah? Ever. you can activate your neuro neurocapsulate and, and control these aspects of your body. Wow. But th th that's the nice things about doing, doing new stuff. And I, I did a lot of new stuff in, with technology and financial uh, industry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These people are doing it on a, you know, your body or the use of uh, mushrooms uh, impacting your brain, which is obviously society has way more value from that, <laughs> in my opinion, than from a new payments mechanism. But still, you know, the mo money is an important dynamic in our world. And if you can influence that, 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 that makes you a um, uh, person of interest, at least, where other people are interested in, because everybody, I think a, a lot of people are interested to understand how they can make money come to them. Yes, yeah, a lot, I think, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so you want to share how they can... <laughs> or, we oh, keep it yeah. for our next, or we keep it for our next talk. Well, the, 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 at least let, let's give it, let's give it a, a little insight to uh, to the to the to the listeners. How can a CEO or a business owner uh, get a bit more money coming towards the business towards him or herself? So there, there's multiple levels, yeah? and uh, and and the first level I, I think is the most important level is why are you in business? Yeah, right? I agree. Yeah, so that's really make a purpose and live that purpose. Huh? So, for example, if you believe in, a, I don't know, uh, local regional approaches, then don't build a global centralized business. Yeah, which just makes no sense. Yeah, if you believe believe in in, in good food, don't eat uh, McDonald's. That just doesn't make sense. So, uh, I'm just overstating this, but live your purpose. Yeah, and then. I think timing is a very important aspect uh, for any entrepreneur, or any business, eh? because there are no bad ideas. There are just mm. you know things that are poorly timed. Yeah, and in my career, I, I noticed that quite often, like with the real world assets, I was too early. Okay. Yeah? When you're too early, the market is not ready for what you're doing. So there's a certain sort of flow of energy, or time and awareness that you need to start understanding and that's where manifestation and for example the concept of trans surfing and trans surfing is a concept of surfing in the quantum energy fields mm -hmm. 
by the use of your spiritual being. Now, quantum uh, influences everything in this world. Those are all energy movements, if you get involved into those theories. Now, money is energy as well. Yeah. So money is not good or bad. Sometimes, you know, people have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it does not. The intent of the people behind the money makes it good or bad energy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So money is neutral. It's nothing. It's how you guide it. Now, um, purpose is important. Secondly, then most important as an entrepreneur in your mental state is feel and live. You deserve the success you want. Because ultimately, if you have any doubt that you deserve your success, because, yeah. well, as a child, I went into this toy store and I stole a mini car and I never took accountability for this. I'm a bad person. Yeah, you're off. You know, any kid has done something like that. Of course. That's what they do. That's exploration. It's not stealing. It's exploration, right? So don't judge yourself for shit like that. So you need to be in a full positive mindset. You need to put no limitations on what you can do. Don't say, well, we can go this far. No, you can go anywhere. Yeah, just make sure that you don't move alone and you move along your entire business with you at a, at a good pace. Right. Yeah. Um, keep focus. Don't get distracted. Yeah. Don't get distracted by the news. Don't get distracted by media, social media. Don't get distracted. Use social media to connect with now. We met Tom. Yeah. So use it to your use the technology it's there to achieve your purpose, but don't become a slave of the technology. Yeah. Uh, I, I think especially nowadays, uh, 20 years ago, that was maybe different, but nowadays yeah. that's a trap. Yeah. Um and create and, and and this is a standard lesson eh, from a book like good to great eh, first bring the right team together create the plan eh? so don't think that as a visionary entrepreneur you can do everything yourself and people yeah. will believe you. the most successful businesses is where you get a number of people together that have value add to one another eh? so somebody has an eye for detail other one is a strategist. The other one is very practical, a doer and a thinker, etc. You know, blend it in nicely, so you have all aspects that you need to run that business. And that, that could be two people, could be seven people, but it really depends on where you are and, and what it is. Yeah, and sometimes it can even still be one person. But keep in mind that when your company grows, that you put diversity in there, and not the diversity of saying black and yellow, man, woman. No. You want diversity in capability and in ability and in thinking models. Yeah. So, you, and, and that, that might result in that you have a woman and a young person and an older person. That's fine. But don't focus on the end result. Focus on what you truly need in your business. Right. Yeah. Now, and I think th those are the most important ingredients and then all other things will be attracted. Because if you have a purpose and a vision, people think this guy is really going to make a difference. And if you fully believe that you deserve it, the universe is going to give it to you. Yeah, And, and, and people will think this is fake. But Elon Musk, the, the, the Apple guys, all these guys have this. Yeah, They never tell it in the books, but from side interviews, you know, Elon Musk and the likes, they all used mushrooms to get to the next level of understanding of who they are. Yeah. And it's not spoken about wisely or widely in, in the world. But I, I, I sit with a lot of entrepreneurs. I know a lot of entrepreneurs, C-level people, politicians. Well, not so many politicians. It should be way more. But a lot of entrepreneurs, big entrepreneurs, small running businesses, publicly or in it, they use breath work mushrooms to expand their capability on the empathetical and, and sixth sense level awareness so that they can better run uh, their business and, and be a better human being. Yeah, I think if, if I may add, when you say that uh, let the universe bring it to you, uh, people need to understand that it requires work. It's not going, yeah. it's going to provide you what you want if you do what you need to get yeah. it. 
Because there are a lot of people who think that there is a law of attraction. Okay. I just imagine it and oops, it's oh, there. No nothing way. Nothing happen. No, no. So, well, something will happen. <laughs> you will fall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but keep focus. Uh, and, and I read this book. It's called Grid. Yeah. It just means keep consistently going on. Yeah. I think before you started recording, say, how are you doing? I'm doing really great, right? Because I put a lot of grit in a project that's ongoing for two and a half years. We're almost there. Two and a half years, not earning a dime on it, just investing money in it, putting time, energy, failures. We had a financing guy. It collapsed. We could have given up. We didn't. We move it forward. Now we're very close to having a whole set of customers and, and acquisition being put together in the, you know, the next quarter of this year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, I think what, one thing is very important because uh, as I am a 10X business coach, uh, I, I listen and I like what Grant says. And he always says in the 10X rule that uh, you always underestimate the amount of work it's going to require. Yeah. You, know, you always underestimate it. And there's a reason for that, Thomas. You know that because if you know exactly how much work it's going to cost, you're never going to get started. <laughs> you won't do well, it. Don't think about it. Your brain is your biggest enemy. Just fucking yeah. do it. Just get it done. Move to the next hurdle. Next hurdle. Next hurdle. Next hurdle. Next hurdle. You know, and, and when I was young, I, I well, young, I was in my twenties. You know, so let's call it young. When you're fifty-one, that was young. Yeah, when uh, you reach your fifties, you can start to use words like when I was young. Yeah, when I was young, exactly. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, you know, I climbed mountains, so alpine mountain climbing, right, uh, into glaciers and areas. And the, the most interesting thing you saw when you were down at the bottom of the mountain, you saw the top of the mountain. You didn't see all the diversions and glaciers you could drop into, ice rivers, yeah, yeah. hurdles that you have to cross to get there. You just didn't see it. And you went. And you made it. Mm -hmm. And in between, you were sometimes, from a personal experience, you were scared shitless. You thought like, how on earth am I going to cross this? What if I that? And what if this happens and we get an avalanche or, you know? Yeah, the, the what if is a killer. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. So, I see it when there are people who no, always no. think this could, this could happen. This is dangerous. This, yeah, but yeah. it could also work. You know, and that, you could survive. Uh, yeah, well, actually, the chance of you surviving is way bigger than something else happening. If you if you let your brain, your your ratio of your brain do the thinking, always think the following: the chance that it will succeed is always bigger than it will not succeed. Yeah. And the reason the chance is always bigger because if you put your mindset to it, you're best equipped to actually make it work. Yeah. And because you, when you're in creative, open-minded mode, a positive attitude mode, your brain doesn't shut down. When you're Saying, but what if that is the path to fear? And the path to fear is the path straight into failure because your brain will stop functioning and it will put you in fight flight mode. Run the fuck away. Absolutely. And then block the opportunity. Uh, uh, so we all know these entrepreneurs. Uh, two years they're doing this, and then it failed. Moved on to the next, then it failed. Moved on to the next. They start in technology, then they open a shop, then they start a, a, a life science practice. Then they become uh, whatever, a breath coach. Then they move. And all these people are just keep going on and they never succeed. And you wonder why. Because they didn't consistently follow through on their dream. Mm. Yeah. There's a few exceptions in this world, maybe, that, that have sort of this life to do diversity and explore everything that's possible in this world. Let it be so. But most of our people come here with sort of, you know, a purpose in life to create something, yeah? because people create, yeah, and uh, creating a family is also creating, creating yeah, yeah, a creation. Yeah, I, I think I told you I'm a beekeeper, yeah? so I, I keep bees at my house, and I love the process of working together with the bees to get the honey out, propolis, create soap out of it, or medical uh, ointments, and or just let people enjoy the honey, yeah, and and all in harmony with the bees. That's a perfect way of a simple creation. But what I love as an entrepreneur is to build a business that really, uh, you know, put some transformational push into the market, yeah. And I did that with contactless payments. I changed the market with ideal payments. I I changed fundamentally. It was too early with the real world assets on the blockchain, mm. yeah. Because if that's a three hundred trillion business by by 2030 that's quite significant that's interesting. 
we've done something right. We gave an example, inspired others. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, that was a nice story. I think we could go on for hours, but let, let, let's stop but here because there was so much. <laughs> there was so, sorry. You know me well. Yeah, we yeah, go. yeah. That's <laughs> why so I enjoyed each time. Uh, let's let the people uh, think about that. Maybe, yes, uh, as they have to think about something, what would be the one takeaway for today from you, for the for the listeners? One takeaway. Well, one takeaway. Uh, I think, you know, looking at myself, what really shifted it for me in, in, in is, you know, keep learning about yourself. Yeah, so whilst you're conducting as an entrepreneur and you're setting up these businesses, keep exploring yourself, you know, in a variety of ways. And I gave some examples here in, in, uh, in the conversation. But if you stop evolving as a human being and you just let your business evolve, e eventually there's a mismatch between yourself and your business. Mm -hmm. And whether you work for a large corporation, there will be a mismatch between yourself and, and the job you're doing, yeah? And if you keep evolving as an individual, you might end up in the place where you wanna be in your job, right? You could get a, a more senior job, yeah? Higher up in the hierarchy, or you could move to a more expert department, yeah? Innovation or specialist product type because you evolve as a person. Could also mean that because you evolve, the company is moving slower, that you have to move to a different organization, mm. yeah? Better key message thomas is in my view explore yourself and evolve yourself and and that that has a number of aspects that learning uh, capabilities in thinking capabilities in doing and most importantly what i noticed personally in the last couple of years is your spiritual development and uh, your sixth sense development whatever we people want to call it that there's more to you than just your brain and just your body yeah yeah there is your soul develop that one on this journey, or maybe it's already developed and just you start applying it in this world. That's a different conversation, but use it. Thank you so much. So if people would like to talk more with you and learn more, where can they find you? Yeah, so, uh, well, I'm on LinkedIn, Rul Wolfert. You can find me on rulwolfert.com, which is my personal website. Uh, you can just send me an email there. Um, if you're interested in this thing about psychedelics, I have a company, it's called extrapositive.com, where you can order the microdosing across Europe. So uh, that might be something. But a personal conversation, you know, um, I, I hang out at events. Uh, you know, just connect me on LinkedIn or my personal website and we can have a conversation. Uh, if you're respectful and positive, you know, that's the message you're going to get back from me. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, it was it was a real pleasure. So I hope you get we get you soon back on, on the podcast. Have a nice day. Thank you, Thomas. It's my pleasure as well. Thank you. And good luck with your new uh, channel.